Once upon a time, there was a cinematic landscape that was not covered in zombie films. Yes, at this time, George Romero's Night of the Living Dead had set down the template for flesh-eating ghouls, but we were a long way away from every film festival having 30 films about the undead. It is in this environment that I would like to introduce you to a little film called Let Sleeping Corpses Lie, or The Living Dead at Manchester Morgue. Now, this film is often put on top 10 lists when you're talking about zombie films, but it seemingly doesn't have that much of an impact in pop culture because it isn't around the time of Night of the Living Dead, and it's also earlier than Lucio Fulci zombie films like City of the Living Dead or House by the Cemetery. And what we have here is a kind of beautiful anomaly. It was made in 1974 by a Spanish director, and it stars a bunch of international actors like Italian heartthrob Ray Lovelock or American's own Arthur Kennedy in a story that takes place in Britain of all places. And so all of these elements come together at a time when the zombie, while it had been defined, the big movies hadn't really happened. And then Let Sleeping Corpses Lie swoops in and it kind of sets an eerily close template to what most people would associate with the classic zombie film. In this, you have that mood that permeates the best kind of 70s horror film, but at the same time, you have it matched up with the kind of gothic hammer feel because the entire story takes place in England. Plus, you also get that George Romero Fulci splatter. Now, one of the reasons this probably doesn't get talked about too much is that none of the participants went on to do like big hits like Living Dead at Manchester Morgue, but that's what's kind of great about it, is that it's a thing that exists on an island. It's all of these disparate elements coming together. A producer that wants to rip off Night of Living Dead, a Spanish director who's kind of getting his feet wet in an international setting, a cast who probably couldn't communicate that well with each other, even though that they're all dubbed with posh British accents in the final film, and a simple direct script that finds an interesting reason slash grand metaphor for the reason that the dead are coming back to life that doesn't actually feel like a complete ripoff. Now, while you may say, oh, but wasn't it done better after this movie came out? Well, kinda, but it still has its own identity. Like I said, all of those elements coming together, it just makes something really special. So if you haven't seen this film, I would highly recommend checking it out this Halloween season. Now what I'm holding in my hand is the Synapse Special Edition that was just recently released. It's packed with new special features, two commentary tracks, a 90 minute documentary on the filmmaker, and most importantly, the best transfer this film will ever have. The lush colors of the British countryside just pop and the music is crystal clear. And this also comes as a soundtrack CD. And while I am not a fan of steelbooks, this one looks very nice. And it actually may not chip when you hold it in your hand, so that is definitely a plus. I wonder if the steelbook companies, there was a different process that he started using on them. Now, for anyone that purchased the restoration that Synapse did of Suspiria, you already know this is really expensive. Like, this is deluxe laser disc expensive. And the reason for that is that Synapse puts hours and hours and hours in the restoration, probably more than most companies. So is it worth the big price tag if you've never seen the film? Ooh, I don't know about that. But if you are a zombie aficionado, or you like or love this film, you'll definitely want to get this release. The Suspiria release later came out as a normal Blu-ray, but I'm not sure if that's gonna happen here. You know what, it probably will, so if you wanna wait like eight months to get just a regular edition of this Blu-ray, then you know, you are a patient person. But this was also released on Blu-ray by Blue Underground, and I believe that Blu-ray may still be available. It has completely different special features, but it doesn't have the beautiful transfer that you'll find on this disc. And speaking of zombie films from places that you wouldn't expect, I would also love to recommend Plaga Zone Zombie Mutante. Now, this is a movie that does not get talked about enough. It is an Argentinian film made by a bunch of friends who have the same energy and drive of Peter Jackson. This is like Sam Raimi on cocaine, has tons of zombie gags in it. It's just infectious in its energy that you don't really get from any zombie movies that are coming out these days. And it also doesn't feel like the classical tropes. Yes, the zombies show up and they chew flesh, 
but they're also musical and they're multicolored and it just has its own identity and it's a shame not more people talk about this movie. So if you just want a fun splattery chaser to let sleeping corpses lie, I would highly recommend Plague Zone Zombie Mutante. And if you'd like more recommendations like this, check me out on the Bay Street Video Podcast, a weekly show that I do with Mark Hansen, the product manager of Bay Street Video, where we go through all of the new Blu-rays and DVDs that are released every week. And if you like this video and you want more recommendations around this spooky season, make sure to subscribe because I'm going to be posting a lot more videos because this is my favorite time of year.